So here's what we've got so far. We've uh, been having our introduction to uh, JavaScript. We're seeing that we uh, simply need to start writing these JavaScript commands within the script section of our project, and it writes JavaScript. Uh, there's a lot to learn, but as a quick aside, uh, this is a website that I would recommend if you want to find out more about JavaScript. You might have heard of it before, w3schools.com. I, I mentioned this one before, w3schools.com is a place where you can go to learn HTML and JavaScript and CSS and PHP, just about everything. And they have uh, lessons for you to go step by step. Uh, you can write live code. It'll give you an example. You write it, you press run it, and then it'll show you. You make a change, you press run it, and it'll show you. And it shows you HTML5 and... Ajax, learn Google Maps. Okay, there's that one's new. SQL, SQL, jQuery, etc. So, uh, w3schools.com is a good place to learn more JavaScript. Okay, so what we've been doing is running JavaScript that happens right away, automatically. As soon as the browser, as soon as the file loads in the browser, we get that pop-up happening right away. So that's one way that JavaScript can run uh, automatically. Another way that it can run is by being triggered by a button press, for example. So let's say that instead of it automatically popping up, uh, sign in, we press a button, and then the pop-up happens, and then the rest happens. In this case, uh, we want a result from a button click. So what I'll do, what we'll do is, let's um, go back to our script, and we're going to comment out a couple of things on line 12. We're going to comment out the original prompt that asked for our name. Let's comment that out. Line 12. And we'll also comment out line 14. I don't want that to display until after I've asked for a name. So this would happen before that. This would, that line would still work, but it would, it would write on screen, Welcome to my site. Let's comment out uh, 12 and 14. What I want instead is for any JavaScript to happen via a button click. So let's say, um, let's go back to uh, the body of our document and we'll write another paragraph. I'm going to separate that into multiple lines because I might have more paragraph stuff there. Uh, so give yourself a new uh, paragraph, and let's write log in. And previously, we, uh, we, we've seen that if we make something a link and then give it a data role of button, it behaves like a button. Well, we're going to do something similar, but it's not... Um, it's not, J, uh, it's not jQuery Mobile. Let's add the button tag around that text. So we'll write the button tag. That makes it like a button, but a very simple button, not like the cool styled ones we've been seeing with jQuery Mobile. It'll just make it act like a button, like it's clickable. Um, and the text that we write between those tags is what shows up on screen. So we've got a button. And whereas we've had something like um, the A tag with an href attribute that makes a link, or we've had, um, what else? We've had an image, and the image tag had the attribute src for source. Here's another one that we can tap into. So on button, let's add an attribute called on click. It's one word, lowercase, on click equals quote end quote. Uh, 
basically what we write inside of the onclick can be any JavaScript. So we sort of attach to JavaScript to this button. It won't happen until we click the button. So just to show you, then we can write uh, prompt, open close parenthesis semicolon, like we had up on top, prompt. And then inside the prompt, remember, uh, it'll we have the ability to write something like, please type your name. And that's in quotes. But wait a minute, we've got the issue that we've got quotes happening here. Open, double quote, close, double quote. And we had open, double quote, close, double quote previously. So we'll have to do that little trick about using single quotes. So within the single quotes, write name. So that's the code, save it and run it. Notice you get no pop-up because we deactivated it from the top area. But after you click the button, then you should get a pop-up. And again, be careful here. We have single quotes there. You get a pop-up when you click the button. Let's see that. I saved it, ran it. There's my login button. I clicked it. I get a pop-up. There's the text that I wrote. Write a name. Click OK. If you're curious and check your console output, it did not capture my name. Well, it did not display the result of capturing my name here. Because we never wrote any code after we captured the name. Remember, it goes top to bottom, left to right. It reads it, executes the commands. So on top there, um, we had set the welcome message up at the very top there. Welcome to my site. And then here we said console log show what's in the welcome message. So it did. Welcome to my site. Here then, um, we made the pop-up happen, but we never captured that text in the variable, so it didn't display it down there. But at the, at the least, you should see then that this pop-up happens only after you click. So we can write JavaScript within this on click, but this is actually m usually pretty inefficient. This is sort of like writing style equals something right on that p-tab. Instead, I would want a little bit more efficiency by adding a class there and then defining the class in my CSS file. And therefore, everywhere where I use that class, it will obey what I made in the CSS file. So here I'm writing some inline um, JavaScript that might not be the best because I want to do more than one command. I want to make the pop-up display, and I want to capture the name, and then I want to write it on screen. I want to do three things, not one. And technically I could add more JavaScript commands here, but then you get this weird unwieldy line of code here. So we'll do it like this instead. Let's remove that prompt. We know it works, but it's not working the way I want. So remove the prompt, and instead uh, let's write, um, let's write, um, what should we call it? We'll call it, um, this is going to be your login. Uh, let's call it, uh, let's call it my log in. Open, close parentheses, semicolon. The semicolon may not. What? May not be required. That's true, but I, I'm just uh, following the practice of using it in the other lines up here, just to, uh, you know, if we were going to add more JavaScript, we definitely would need it, but I guess it doesn't quite matter. But 
just consistency. My login. So a moment ago we wrote prompt, and it ran the prompt command. Now I wanted to run the my login command. There's no such thing as my login in JavaScript. We can invent it, however. So what we're about to invent is what's known as a function. A function is basically a series of JavaScript commands. So if I ask you, um, uh, how did you get here to the class? Some of you would say, well, I left my house and got in my car and I got here. Right? Three, three steps. Some of you might say, well, I, uh, I left my house and I took out my keys and I opened the car door and I got in the car and I turned on the car and then I got on the five. Very specific. So two answers to the same question. A series of steps. So a function, what we're about to define here, is sort of like that, a series of JavaScript commands. Because I want to do several things. I want to display the prompt, capture the name in the variable, and then display the result on screen. And I'm going to put all of those three commands into one function, the my login function, so that if I say my login, it'll run all three of those commands in sequence. So we'll go back to our, uh, our code up here. And actually, we're going to reactivate both of these, but we're going to then change them so that they run after you click the button. So our line 12, we will re or uncomment it. And the document right, uncomment it. Above the um, well, let me show you this, and then we'll do it. Uh, the way so don't write this just yet. The way uh, this would work is that we write a function and then define the function, whatever. Open close parentheses, curly brace, close curly brace. Um, this would be the way that we want to create a function. Like we did variable up here, we wrote var, the name of the variable, the end. Function is more complex, so we have to write function, the name of the function, open close parentheses, open close curly brace, and I call it, and then the stuff in the middle, all the commands. This is the basic idea of how we invent a command in JavaScript. And that's what I want to do here. But what I want in the parentheses, uh, in the curly braces, are these three lines. I want these three lines to happen when we run that function. So. That's the preview, and here's what we'll do. Above, above the, uh, the, the welcome message text, so let's write function, lowercase, function. And we know we're going to use a function down here called my login. So we'll say my login. Open and close parentheses space, curly brace. So what would follow is a list of all of the commands I want to do once the my login command runs, which are these three right here. So I'll make a new line after document write and close the curly brace. Open curly brace, close curly brace, semicolon. So here we're saying when we click the button, run my login. What does my login mean? This is what my login means. Do this and this and this. Now this is optional, but usually we've we've been indenting things when there's a new block of code. The button is inside a paragraph, so we've indented it. These paragraphs are inside a body, so we indented it. These commands are inside of my login, so I should indent them. Watch this trick. Uh, Notepad has this cool trick. Watch this. I'm going to select these three lines like that, just haphazardly, press tab, and all three indent. I don't have to go in, tab, tab, tab. I can select the three anyway, just like that, tab, and then all three tab. Just a little thing, but very useful when your OCD and everything must line up.
So shouldn't you be including the bar reference in this? We could, and I'll explain why we might not need to in just a moment. Okay, so um, let's save and see how that works. Waiting for me to click it, so I'll click it. There's the pop-up. Because what's happened is I've clicked it. It jumped back up here, ran the first command, asked for my name. Clicked OK. What happened at that point was it took my name and put it in the variable and displayed it in the console log and then document write. There. It did. Good eye. It erased everything that was in the H1 and replaced it. Uh, it replaced everything that was in body and only wrote, only, only uh, put the result of my welcome message. So it sort of uh, self-destructed itself in a way. So see that when we when we wrote when we did this up on the script area uh, t to let it run on its own, it um, it was still doing it. But it's the thing about that it goes step by step by step. When we were up on the script, uh, it did do document write and erased everything. But there was nothing yet because we had been stopped at the script, and then it continued and wrote what was in body. But here now we're seeing that if we write document write. It's the nuclear option. It writes, replaces what's there and writes what's inside of our, our parentheses. And the result is it erased the button and the, and the paragraphs. But uh, did that work for everyone? Did you get your name to appear on screen? Okay, so the point I'm making here is that we're gonna use we're gonna see and we're gonna use functions a lot. Functions basically invent our own JavaScript, allows us to invent our own JavaScript. You know, there's let's say a thousand JavaScript commands, but actually I need a command to do a specific thing, so I invent my own JavaScript command, my own function. And within a function, I can have multiple other commands. I can even have functions within functions. Now, one function runs only after a previous function runs, so we can get pretty complicated. Um, and also showing you that uh, I can add the, the attribute of onClick to things, and it'll run some JavaScript. So what happened here is that document.write is the nuclear option. It writes whatever, rewrites whatever in the body with what I have in, in that spot there. So we can do this a couple of other ways instead. Um, let's um, comment out the document write, document dot write. Let's comment it out to deactivate it. I want something a little friendlier, that it doesn't erase what's already there. Um, but we need a placeholder. On screen, I want to have a sort of a empty placeholder so that when someone types their name, show the name in that placeholder. Empty placeholder. Where have I heard that before? Empty container in HTML. A div. A div. So let's go back to the body of our document. And let's write a div tag. Keep it on one line, doesn't matter. And this will be just an empty placeholder, and I'll put stuff into the div dynamically via JavaScript. But in order to work with it, it needs a reference. 
it has it needs an identifier. Uh, so we have div slash div, and then inside of div, not the, not within the not within the tags, but as an attribute, uh, we're going to then add an ID equals something. Uh, and we've seen this with div data role page ID home. We gave the home page the unique identifier of home. Uh, here, this div, we're, we're giving it a unique identifier, and we'll call it um, the message. Okay, so we've got a placeholder, and now the concept is that when someone types their name, the name will appear there instead of erasing everything. So we need to change our code up here. Uh, we'll leave that commented code alone, but now here's our difference. Um, here we're getting into um, more JavaScript. We're here, I'm saying on the document, in the body, uh, just write this. What I want to instead is target that one empty placeholder down there. So we'll say document dot get element capital E by capital B B Y I D capital I. document.get element by id open close parentheses in the parentheses we'll add quotes and then the name of the id that we're trying to get or or trying to work with the message so up here we're saying Let's work with something on screen by, uh, that we reference by the ID, whatever we write there, the message. Yes? Why is that in So before the quotes was for literal mm -hmm. things, well, maybe I should pick slightly different names, but here I've got welcome message, and this is the message. Up here we've defined welcome message as the variable, as the container. And then down here we've used the message as an ID, as an identifier for that div. So I'm trying to figure out when we use quotes and when we don't. Because every other time we use quotes, it's for something to. Because it's still it's being. Kind of regular, like, you know, language, it, it appears. It's still. Well, that is what's happening. We do have this written right here as the message, and here I'm referencing it to literally like that. So it's in quotes. Yes. If you did not use quotes, mm -hmm. then JavaScript would try to treat it as the MSG, as a variable name. That's what's been happening up here. Whenever we don't use quotes, it thinks it's a variable. We're not dealing with a variable. We're dealing with something named the message. So that's why we've got it in quotes. But is that the only time that you don't use quotes when it's a variable? Pretty much. When we're trying to display the contents of a variable, definitely, then. And I'm sure there's other instances, but for our purposes, basically, if we want to display the contents of a variable, don't put it in quotes. And here we're trying to latch onto a div that's on the screen, and we're referencing it by its ID, this unique name, so I have to put it in quotes, or else it'll think it's a variable and try to display the contents of that variable, which doesn't exist. It's not a variable. It's the name of an ID. It, it's the name of a it's the name of a of a div.
So furthermore here, we're, we're going to then say um, the, um, what, what are we going to do with this? We're, we're referencing this ID, but what are we going to do with it? Next we'll say dot inner HTML capital, no space. Dot inner HTML. Um, this we've seen dots a couple of places, and we, we're seeing that we're affecting something in our website, and we're getting like d levels deeper into it in a in a sense. Here, there's a document, and we're going to get some element that's in the document by its ID <coughs> name. But then we're going to say dot inner HTML. Later on, we can talk about let's say affecting the color, the background color of something. So we would say something like this, dot uh, CSS or, or something, I forget what it actually is, but there's a way that then we affect properties of the thing that we're talking about. And here we're saying we're going to change the HTML of uh, this element that we've referenced. So we'll then we'll say equals, and here I'll say we'll save ourselves some effort by copying and pasting everything that's in these parentheses, including the quotes. Up here where we had document.write, parentheses, copy everything here, and paste it after this equals. So I'm going to select the quote, blah, 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 end quote, not the parentheses. Semicolon semicolon at the end to finish it. So basically take what was in the parentheses of document.write and put it after the equals. And then end the line. Semicolon. I'm going to save it and run it. There's my button. Click it and asks my name. Click OK. There's my name. There's my name after everything. It didn't erase anything. It went after. Logically, because here I've said put my name in the div called the message. That's what that line is doing. <coughs> it's inner HTML. Fill it with that. The inner HTML of what? The div called the message. There. Question. Uh, this is this doesn't work. And it's like when you click on the message and you see it looks like it shows everywhere that you type in the message. Right? Yeah. Is there a way to like change it? So it's like if you wanted to change your ID, you could just change it like you want to type in. Like you know how if you wanted to change it, you would have to manually find and replace. Well, you, well, so the question here is, uh, did, have you guys been noticing, I think we've said this, that if you select something everywhere else that it appears in the code also selects, which is very useful. But uh, now that I've selected it, I can go up to um, search uh, replace, and it sees, okay, you mean the message, you want to replace it with my message. Replace all, and then everywhere in your code it'll replace it. Question. The plus symbol, technically it's called concatenation, and I'm sure there's a very specific definition for it, but the way you could think about it is uh, placing elements next to each other uh, when, they, when they're output. So here I'm saying put h1 style, etc. on screen, and also place next to it 
whatsoever in the variable, and put next to it the rest of the h, or the rest of the h1. So it's sort of just, uh, does anyone have a better definition of concatenation? It's just put this next to this next to this. So we'll, we see that a lot when we're trying to display the contents of a variable, but also some literal text concatenation, joining things. Can you give IDs to paragraphs? Yeah. The P tag, we can also give it an ID. And um, control it the same way. Now, have you tried to see what happens if you continue to press log in and continue to put in your name? Every time you click log in and type a name and click OK, it will update. This is the thing about being dynamic. This is what JavaScript allows us to do, to go above and beyond, to, to do something because of, a, of an action. In this case, on click. Every time we click the button, run the my login function, and my login is to find up here. Do this and this and this every time we click. In your script, you could, if you wanted to keep people from doing that, in your, in your script, you would maybe erase the button so they can log in a second time. Yeah, let's do that. Let's say that someone uh, clicks login, puts in their name, but you no more logins because you've logged in. Let's uh, hide the button. Uh, in order to do that, we need to be able to reference the button. So the best way to do that is by the button having an ID. So let's give the button an ID, write a little more code to hide the button after it's been used. So line 24 um, doesn't matter where we add it most likely, but the way I like to do it is have the on click as the last attribute of, of, of a button, just for me, because logically um, makes sense, but what I mean is I'm going to, let's give it an ID, let's give the button an ID, and we could have added it after on click. I don't think there'd be any big difference, but I'm going to add it here, and let's call it uh, log in btn, and there's an art and a science to using IDs and variables, and it's up to you to decide uh, how you want to do it. Sometimes, like let's say you're working at a company, a bunch of programmers, there's already a style guide to develop that every time you do an ID on a button, it must be named like this. Um, so I'm just calling this sort of like what is actually in the button, log in, and, and um, putting a suffix at the end of btn. These names are totally arbitrary, but uh, something that would make sense. And notice the what I've what I've been doing and, and my style is well usually everything's gonna be lowercase it's, if especially if it's one word. But once you start adding more words to it for readability usually what I do is I then put uppercase letters on the next words. I'm kinda just following with what JavaScript has also established because get element by ID, I did not invent that, and JavaScript that's the way they do it. Get element by ID should be capitalized like that. Notice inner HTML is capitalized like that. So I'm following along with that sort of concept and I'm putting, uh, this has a couple of terms, intercaps, 
and putting capitalization internally or inside of the variable intercaps. I've also heard it called as camel caps because it looks like little humps in a camel. That's a kind of. So log in btn, that's an ID. So now I can reference it and do something with it uh, in my. Um, in my uh, in my code up here, uh, in my function, I'm going to add one more command to the function to do this and this and this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, same as before. Document dot get element. Hide it before. Um, I yeah I guess we could hide it right away. I'm going to do eventually CSS display none. Um, we'll try both. We'll do it this way and we'll see what the difference is. There's probably subtle differences. But here I'm going to do uh, the same as before. I need to reference this particular element. So document get element by ID, open close parentheses. In the quotes, in the parentheses, I'll add quotes again because I need to reference this literally with quotes. Log in btn. It's pretty much the same as before. Then we've got dot. This is where some of you JavaScript people remind me. What's the one to edit the CSS property again? Set CSS, something like that. Um, let's ask the world's best book here, the best uh, reference guide. Uh, set CSS via JavaScript. Set CSS attribute. <coughs> What's that? Dot style. Ah, okay. Dot style. Dot. Okay. There we go. So we need to get a little more complicated. We say uh, dot style CSS, basically. Um, Are you missing a quote up there? Yes, I am. Thank you. There we go. Open, open and close quotes. Dot style. Uh, and this will look slightly reminiscent, but a little bit different. We're up here we've got uh, right here style equals color, and then a value. We have to write style dot something. And here I'm going to say style display. equals none, I believe. Hmm? Hidden. Hidden would work, which is slightly different than none. Let me try both. I think you're talking about unique. Uh, display none would remove it completely from the DOM. I yeah, take a take a moment to look that up because I, I don't because I'm thinking of the CSS property of display none. Just display none, display block, etc. So there might be another way of delete, but it's might be a different property. So here uh, display none. So what this should do then is, okay, we've done all of that stuff, and then we'll say to the button, we'll change its style, its CSS style, which one? The display property to be none, which basically removes it from the body of the document. So the, what that did was then removed the button. Now you can't have multiple logins. For display none and for or for which one?
Actually, did that work for everyone? There's a little digression, but uh, display none. Question? If, if instead, would it, would it work if we put our ID tag on the paragraph and then use the get element by ID and inner HTML and just replace the whole paragraph with an with empty string? Like we with an empty string or with none? Oh. Um, because that's slightly different. But uh, yeah, we could do the same thing here. We could add ID to the paragraph, and then the whole paragraph and everything inside of it would then display none. Would be would be removed. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Can you use other um, elements besides this for um, for for inputting things into? Like you, you used you know, the a blank the mm -hmm. could you have also used the paragraph tag? Yeah. We we could have used the paragraph as well. We just give it an ID. You know, we could put the message here so it would replace itself. That would work. Um, the reason I you you might want to choose a particular one is because all of these tags have an inherent uh, style. A paragraph might have a line height of two, let's say, and a div might have a line height of one. So everything has an inherent padding and margin and line height and such. So uh, if we go for something more generic, then we might have like a div, we might have less to deal with if we need to restyle it. Okay, if you um, had not put that style in H1 style, um, whatever, up here, the, in the color and stuff, mm -hmm. could you have also styled the div that way without styling that? Would it have come out the same? Do you mean um, styling the div or styling the text? Because what's happening up here is it's styling the text. Well, you had discussed that, you know, to just the local message, uh -huh. um, could you have styled the text by styling the div? Yeah, we would do something like this, document, get element by ID, with the name of the div, and then dis uh, style dot color. This is, you'd have to do it in JavaScript? Or could you we, style that div using CSS and just have it input the information via JavaScript? It's a good question. It might um, it might automatically inherit whatever color was there. I sort of think because of inner HTML, it might replace it. But that's why I'd be happy to try it out. I'm going to do here style, and I'm going to say color of the text inside will be green, right? And then up here, I'm not going to define any text color. So this should display the result in green. It's green. Is that what you meant? So yeah, we've had this empty div container, and we gave it some style, and the text we put inside of it from that variable came in unstyled, so it obeyed this style. Uh, however, notice it's not h1. So I could uh, put back enough of that code without the style, and it would then stay h1. Let me go back. Let's say I don't add any style here. So it stayed as h1 because I defined it h1 up here, and then it got green because I said make that div container color, text color green. All right, so does this work for everyone? Mm -hmm. 
So we've been introducing a lot of concepts here, creating variables, which are containers that hold something, creating functions, which are basically a series of commands compressed into one super command. Uh, we've looked at document.write, which will basically nuke everything there and write something new in your document. And then a more fine-tuned approach, which is get element by ID in a particular thing on the screen, change its contents, inner HTML, or its style. And this is all via JavaScript, via, uh, via, via a button press, interactive. None of this happens until we press the button on click. Any questions so far? Yes. Is on click on the menu to the bottom? Um, I. Is it the link that you do? Yeah, it could work with a link as well. If we add an A tag, you know, an A href, it could work there as well on click. Okay, so um, let's say uh, for more practice, let's say we want um, to, uh, to accomplish things via button presses. Uh, let's say we want to um, I don't know, let's say we, we want to change the background color of the whole document via a button press. So we'll make a new button we'll make a new button to change the background color and then when someone presses it then it changes the the background color. So this will reinforce making the button using the on-click making functions. So, let's, uh, let's go back to line 26, give ourselves a new line, a new line above the end of the paragraph. We'll say change background. And uh, that'll actually be a button, so we'll, we'll wrap the button tag around it. And I'll call, I'll give this an ID just in case I might I might need it at some point. I might need to reference it. So I give it an ID and I'll call this change uh, BG uh, BTN. It's a button, so that's why I have that suffix at the end, and then the name of it change BG. And then in order for this to do anything via JavaScript, we'll say on click. We'll add a um, we'll then we'll we'll then need to invent a new function here so we can do multiple steps. And we can call this um, change the BG. So same sort of syntax as before, in that we have the open and close parentheses, and um, semicolon. And so this will want to, if I were to save and run this right now, it wants to uh, run 
a function called change the bg, which wouldn't really do anything. And if we check the console reference error, change the bg is not defined. So you might run into that issue a few times. Um, that you typed everything, you check the console, and something, and it might say something like, whatever is not defined. And you say, no, it is defined. I wrote function up here. Well, it might have been a, a spelling error, uppercase, lowercase. So I'm calling a function here that is not defined yet. That means I need to create one. So we'll go up over here, after function of my login, line 19, make a new space, we'll write function, the name of the one we're inventing, change the bg, open close parentheses, space curly brace, couple of enters, because I know I'm going to have some commands, close curly brace semicolon, So there's uh, probably lots of ways to do it. There's many ways to do the same thing. Oftentimes, I'm going to try the same way as I've done previously here of document get element by ID. And this time, I want to change the background color of everything. And everything is inside of the body, the body tag. So we're going to reference body, but it doesn't have an ID. So we'll add uh, tag name, yeah. That one is get element by tag name. Okay. Let's try that. So, uh, so that's document get, what was it again? Get tag by tag. OK. Document dot get element by tag. So here, notice this wouldn't have worked over here because more than one thing is called div. So we have to reference it by its own unique identifier. And here we're going to say get an element by its tag. There's only one body tag in the whole document. Well, which tag do we mean? Parentheses. Attribute elements by tag. Oh, okay. How how's that again? Get elements. Elements. By. By. Tag. Tag. Name. Name. Okay. And then parentheses, and the rest. Yeah. Get elements by tag name. Body. Style dot background color, and I think here this is this is weird. Normally we write background dash color, but I believe we have to write background no spaces and a capital background color. So here this is something I thought up off the top of my head, and notice it's not exactly behaving how I wanted, but then this isn't a perfect example of then, um, of then using the console log to try to figure out what the issue is. 
so sometimes what I do is to see if this is working as expected I have some console log output so my concept is that when I click this button I expect change the BG to run and if I'm seeing this message in the console log then at least I'm clicking the button and it's running the function I expect So when I press, when I press the button, it's popping up down here under console <coughs> log. So I am, oops, I am affecting. I, I am. I'm clicking the button and that that I'm expecting. But then the problem is. type error document blah 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 is undefined so that's either means I didn't type style get elements by tag name it looks for an array return it up on, on w3 scrolls so you need like a bracket zero close bracket where at? after the body Leak. after after the print <coughs> the method returns out you're right there Bracket zero, close bracket. Before style and all of that? Yeah. So then I should have looked this up, but then the um, background color, okay. There it is. So it is a capital. All right, so again, there's many ways to do this. Uh, notice this other way that we're doing it. Uh, we've got get elements by tag name, which particular tag body, and then I guess since it's an array, it's a collection of um, elements. We have the first element in the array, zero, and then style, background color, we don't write background dash color as normal. We write background with a capital C, as is the, uh, the rest of the JavaScript style, equals a color. So I wrote a regular human readable color. And then I get yellow in the background when I click the button. Uh, yeah. Document dot body dot dot style dot background color pink. There you go. So there's many ways to skin the digital cat. Uh, up here, we could have also tried the, the one we've done previously, get element by ID, but we have to add the ID, etc. So many ways to do it. And here we're saying, okay, uh, in the document there's a body. Let's change its style, specifically the background color, to this color. Possible that one works so simply because the body is at the top of the document tree? That's what I'm thinking, and it's also because it's a unique identifier. There aren't any other body tags, but it is at the top of the DOM, so uh, that would make sense as well. If, if you did it with a, with a div and you had multiple divs, would it just change all of them? Or would it change none of them? You mean uh, if all of the divs had the same ID? Or if we had no. written document.div? 
Well, if we, if we did the either the document dot div or we did the get element by tag name div. Well, a couple of problems there because uh, if we do get element by ID, only one right. document can only one thing can have that ID. Right. So the question so there is moot. But if we do it by tag name, uh, well, we had to deal with uh, the which particular element of the of the array. So here we put zero, so it was the first body that it found. So I assume oh. if we've got div ten body uh, ten divs, and we put zero here, it would only do the first. Yes. Uh, yes. Down. How far? So you see here we're getting into these various other issues. Um, we're going to take one more break. When we come back, we're going to see how JavaScript can be used to find out your position, the coordinates of your location. Uh, we'll do 10 minutes. It's 8.20. We'll be back at 8.30. And then we'll look at JavaScript with uh, coordinates.